It was September of 1943, and United States Army Air Force's servicemen were puzzled by the strange aircraft silhouette approaching the airfield at Wright Field in Dayton, Ohio. It had an airframe unlike any other employed by the U.S. Army, but was marked by American flags and insignia. The men behind the anti-aircraft guns were uncomfortable at the sight of the unidentified warplane and prepared for the worst. Once it got closer, the crews were able to identify the warplane as a Luftwaffe Junkers Ju-88, except it looked more imposing and powerful with its three cannons located in the mosquito-shaped cockpit. The men didn't know it by then, but it was the first captured Junkers Ju-188, a new multi-role fighter bomber that was also the first German combat aircraft to ever cross the Atlantic and land in the U.S. Fortunately, it was being flown by an American crew. Junkers Ju-88 Following Adolf Hitler's rise to power in 1933, Germany began a rearmament phase to rebuild its military from the ground up. This gave rise to the new air force, the Luftwaffe. In 1935, Junkers submitted two proposals for the Reich Air Ministry's high-speed tactical bomber. The result was the introduction of the Junkers Ju-88 medium bomber, which would become the backbone of the Luftwaffe during World War II. The aircraft flew for the first time in 1936 and had its operational debut in September of 1939. Junkers opened several plants across Germany as the years went by to ramp up production. The Ju-88 had a very identifiable mosquito-shaped cockpit, a short nose, and large wings, and had a length of 47 feet, a wingspan of 65 feet, and a height of 15 feet. It featured three-bladed variable-pitch propellers and could achieve a maximum speed of 290 miles per hour with a bomb load of 3,100 pounds. The Ju-88 was manned by a crew of four, a pilot, a bombardier front gunner, a navigator ventral gunner, and a radio operator rear gunner, and had five 7.92mm MG-81 machine guns. By the time the conflict ended, Junkers had produced over 15,000 Ju-88s, of these, roughly 9,000 were bombers. Numerous variants and derivatives would ensure the Ju-88 was used in a multitude of roles that ranged from dive and level bombers to night and day fighters, reconnaissance, and others. Nevertheless, the Air Ministry sought to replace the outstanding Ju-88 early in the war, but the bar was set very high. A new derivative. The Bomber B program aimed to develop a bomber design that was faster, could carry a heavier payload, and fly higher to avoid enemy fighters and interceptors. Still, unexpected delays would halt the program and force the Luftwaffe to depend on the Ju-88 and develop new variants for combat operations. Junkers Ju-288 was meant to replace the Ju-88, but development problems with the UMO-222 coupled piston engine forced the program's suspension in early 1943. Instead, Junkers began converting Ju-88s into ground attack aircraft to use them against the Soviet Union from 1943 onwards. Other variants were filled with Telefunken FUG-212 aerial radars for night fighting roles and proved excellent hunters of British bombers invading German aerospace. And while the Luftwaffe introduced more variants of the Ju-88, Junkers set out to develop an in-between model connecting the Ju-88 with the next aircraft that was to replace it. The Ju-88B and Ju-88E variants were then converted to test aircraft before the eventual introduction of the Ju-188 Wrecker or Avenger. This new derivative of the Ju-88 followed the German philosophy of using a basic airframe to simplify production and come up with something new without strain on production. Junkers Ju-188 barely differed from the Ju-88, but it was faster, more agile, and could carry a heavier payload. Over a thousand of them would be built by the war's end. Ju-188 Avenger The Ju-188 Avenger was sent to the testing grounds in mid-1943 to see how much of an improvement it was over the Ju-88. Like its predecessor, the Wrecker was designed to be fitted with either UMO or BMW engines. The airframe's design had some differences, especially regarding the cockpit. The Ju-88's stepped nose was replaced by a canopy that began under the short nose and abruptly curved up 
to give space for the rear dorsal machine gun. Its main armament comprised a 15mm auto cannon that protruded from the nose and a 13mm MG131 cannon located in the main turret. In addition, a 7.92mm MG81 machine gun was placed in a dorsal rear-facing ventral position, while another was placed in a rear-facing gondola. Other variants also carried a 20mm main cannon, but they were later standardized with the MG131. The Wrecker also saw its wingspan increased by almost 3 feet, bringing it to 72 feet 2 inches. The tail and the fin were also enlarged to improve performance. Overall bomb load capacity had a limit of 6,600 pounds that could be distributed within the internal bomb bay and the external bomb load in the wings. Its maximum recorded speed was 310 miles per hour, and its approximate range was 1,361 miles, with a service ceiling of over 31,200 feet. The first JU-188s entered service in September of 1943 as Pathfinder units. Operational Service Of the almost 1,100 JU-188s produced, most of them served in reconnaissance roles. As Pathfinders and Night Fighters, the JU-188s were the first aircraft equipped with the jam-proof Liechtenstein SN-2 radar. These radars helped Pathfinder JU-188s lead the way of friendly aircraft towards British night bombers ravaging German cities. For its reconnaissance role, the JU-188T featured a pressure cabin and special cameras to take high-quality pictures of advancing enemy formations and zones of great importance. The D-1 variant was also a reconnaissance variant that ditched the main cannon, reduced the crew of four to just three men, and carried additional fuel and cameras. The D-2 was very similar to the D-1, except it was equipped with a maritime radar for use at sea. It worked in coordination with the A-3 variant, which could carry two torpedoes, and was fitted with an FUG-200 Hohenfeil anti-shipping radar. Meanwhile, the JU-188C featured an advanced remotely controlled tail turret to bolster the rear firepower of the aircraft, but it was inaccurate and unreliable, and was never mass-produced. According to military reports from the British forces tasked with defending England from the Luftwaffe bombing runs between June 1944 and March 1945, the Third Reich sent over 70 aircraft. Of these, most were Junkers JU-188s. Although it was superior to the JU-88 in almost every aspect, the 188 Wrecker arrived too late in the war to make a change. As the war progressed, the JU-188s were slowly replaced by the JU-388, which had improved range, higher ceiling, and more bomb load capacity. Many of these new aircraft were converted from JU-188 airframes. From Cyprus to Ohio In September of 1943, a strange event occurred over the skies of Allied-occupied Cyprus. Under the blinding sun, British soldiers noticed what appeared to be the silhouette of a German Junkers Ju-88 approaching an airfield close to the Allied command. How it got there without being shot down remains a mystery to this day. But one thing was certain. Its pilot deliberately flew it straight into the hands of the Allies. Every man in the area was bewildered, except the German pilot, who gracefully landed the aircraft as if he was landing on a Luftwaffe airstrip, except he was not. According to an article by Popular Science published in March 1944, the Luftwaffe pilot was tired of the war and wanted nothing more to do with it. Whatever the truth, the Royal Air Force immediately made the most out of it and began inspecting the almost brand new JU-188, which had less than 50 hours of flight. The British then realized this was no common JU-88, it was an improved version, the JU-188. After testing the aircraft and gathering information about it, the British handed it to the Army Air Forces. The JU-188, bearing the name Bakshish, Persian for something for nothing, was then marked with the American flag and Army star and got ready to fly to the United States for more testing. It was also fitted with auxiliary gas tanks from a Lockheed Lightning and flown to the U.S. in hops of 900 and 1,500 miles. In five days, Bakshis registered over 12,000 miles at an average speed of 240 miles per hour. Major Warner E. Newby and Lieutenant General W. Cook, who flew and tested the German multi-role bomber, said the aircraft gave little trouble and praised its performance. 
Bakshish flew well, had an excellent radio compass, and the navigational equipment and autopilot were ideal. Major Newby said that the Ju-188 only had one problem, and it was a curious one that truly honored German engineering. Quote, it is the heaviest and most vicious airplane I've ever flown, but it also has more damned gadgets than any plane I'd ever seen. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Also, let us know what you think of the Ju-188 and its different variants in the comments below. And stay tuned.